you students welcome to legacy is academy in today's video we are going to discuss about fluvial landforms that means the landform that develops due to depositional work of the river and we are going to discuss this very important concept that comes under the chapter of landform development in the geography so first of all to give you the brief introduction what do we mean by term fluvial landforms or fluvial depositional landform so in simple term we can define fluvial depositional landform as such kind of landform that develop due to deposition of sediments that are brought by river after causing extensive erosion in the upper course of the rivers the rocks and cliffs are continuously weathered and eroded in the youth stage or the upper course of the river then further as the river moves in downstream direction on a level plain it brings down a heavy load of sediment from the upper courses and also as river comes from the mountains it enters in the plain area due to the decline of gradient or decrease in gradient the velocity of the river or the velocity of water stream also decreases and as the stream velocity decreases it reduces its transportation capability or transport or sediment carrying capacity and as the sediment carrying capacity of the river decreases that means it leads to deposition of the extra or excess sediment load around the river banks and these development lead to development these kind of deposition deposition lead to development of depositional landforms also if we talk about since river is carrying huge amount of sediment of different different sizes varying sizes what we see that the coarser materials or the material sediments which are larger in size they are deposited first and then the finer silt smaller sized particles smaller sized sediments they are carried toward the mouth of the river and many time it forms delta where the river enters into the ocean or sea so if we try to understand the depositional uh, work of the river we can divide the overall stretch of river into three different courses we have upper course that is when the river is flowing in the mountainous areas obviously since in the mountainous area you have the steep gradient that means river is able to flow with a high velocity and it is in this region river forms lot of deep erosional features such as valleys such as uh, waterfalls rapids gorges and this kind of uh, this kind of land masses or landforms then river enters into the middle course when it just comes out of the mountain we have decrease in gradient and that is why in this region river is able to flow with a moderate velocity here you have both vertical erosion as well as lateral erosion or sideward erosion is what we can see in the course of rivers and here we have a lot of depositional features we see in the river or along the river bank and finally when river reaches near the sea it almost reaches near the sea level base level and here it flows with a minimum velocity with very low velocity and thus here vertical erosion is almost absent mostly river is able to cause lateral erosion or sideways erosion and that is when we have development of several other depositional features such as flood plains braided channels and all these which we will discuss in the coming in the coming time so first of all let us try to understand the depositional landform that we see in the middle course of the river and the most important depositional landform that you see are called as alluvial fans and cones alluvial fans and cones are such kind of features which forms immediately when the river is coming out from the mountainous area and is entering into the plain area so when the river enters from mountain to plain immediately there is a sudden decrease in the gradient this causes sudden decrease in the flow velocity of the river and thus river which is flowing from mountain when it break into the foot slope of this hills foot slope of this mountain they deposit or start depositing sediments all around itself and thus the sediments then spread out in a kind of broad broad fashion in a form of a structure which we can which we can call as low to a high cone shaped deposits if you look at the picture here it will be clearly visible to you this is as you can see is the mountain so river is coming from these mountains and as it enters in the plain area its velocity decreases and as you can see around this river huge volume of sediment start to get accumulated in the fan kind of shape and also if you look at in the vertical direction vertically the shape of this deposited deposited landforms look like kind of cone so that is why due to the fanning out of deposition it is called as alluvial fans and due to the vertical shape which resembles a conical shape it is also called as alluvial cone here we can see alluvial fans are much more wide spread and less vertically developed on the other hand alluvial cones are much more vertically developed and relatively less widely spread out so these are differences between alluvial fans and alluvial cones lot of such alluvial fans and cones you can see in the foothill of siwalik region when the river from the himalayas such as kosi river ganga river gandak river they enter into the plain areas 
Then after forming the alluvial plain, when the river start to flow at a very slow to moderate velocity, when the gradient is very, very lesser, what we see, we see a development of something which we call as a flood plains. Flood plains in simple term can be defined as a very gently sloping flat region which border the river stream or water stream. The flood plains are covered by huge amount of sediments which are generally medium to a small in size such as silt, mud sand, clay, loams and these all sediments are deposited and are brought down by the river. Not only that, the river deposits the sediment in its course but also when we have flood regular flooding when it happens in river, river is able to overspill from its bank and also deposit these sediment particles in the adjoining region. And overall, a long period of time, this adjoining regions and the deposited, uh, this deposited sediment keep on increasing in its size, keep on increasing in its area. And thus we have development of a flood plain. For example, if you look at this particular diagram, we can see this is the natural course of the river, which we can call as river uh, river course. And this, this is what we can call as river bed. So in normal time, river is flowing through this particular fixed river channel. But sometimes when you have the flood, river can overspill from its bank and can deposit sediments all around in the adjoining areas. And thus these regions, which is very, very fertile because of the develop because of deposition of the fresh sediments every year, are called as flood plain. And these are one of the most intensely cropped regions, one of the region which is most intense, uh, where most intense agriculture is practiced is the floodplain regions. Now, interestingly, if you look at this particular diagram, what we can see that just on the bank of the river and before the floodplain region, you have another structure that is formed by rivers that is called as levees or sometimes called as natural levees. Natural levees are kind of artificial embankment like a structure that develops due to the continuous deposition of sediment by the river when there is a recurrent flooding in the river. And thus many times these natural levees also act as a protective barrier against the severe flood that may happen in the river and thus protect these settlements if there is any in these adjoining regions from the wrath of the flood of the rivers. And thus you will see in the India, especially in the northern part of India, where flood are regular occurrences, a state government try to strengthen these natural levees by using uh, uh, by using uh, RCC cements and all these different kind of materials, so that the natural levees can become much more stronger and can resist the flow of the river, can resist the flood-like situation of the river, protecting the people, the villages, the settlements in these areas. So these are two important features that we see in the middle course of the river around the flood plain. Now, interestingly, in the plain region of uh, India and not only India and other parts of the uh, world itself, we see a very interesting development of a landform that we can call as meanders. As you can clearly see from this particular picture, this is how the flow of river happens when the gradient is very, very slow. And this we can see wavy kind of flow that we see. The wavy pattern of flow of the river is something that we can call as meanders in simple terms. If you have to define the meanders, we can define it as when the stream or the river is flowing on a flat or very gently sloping surface, they are not able to flow in the straight line because obviously the velocity of river is very, very less and thus they are not able to flow in a straight line. Rather, they get perturbed, rather they get disturbed by the change in elevation on the landmass and also due to various obstruction that river can face due to presence of vegetation or any other kind of materials in the course of the river. Thus, River, rather than flowing in a straight path, straight direction, it tends to take a sinuous course or a kind of wavy course. And while flowing, it makes gentle loop in its flows. And this gentle loop is what we can call as river meanders. Now, geographers and geologists have not been able to come uh, together and have and do not have any kind of unanimous uh, understanding that why and how meanders actually form. So let us try to understand more that how the river meanders and this adjoining area look like. So as we can see, we have discussed already around the adjoining regions of river, we have the plain that is called as flood plain. And as we can see, river is able to flow not in a straight line, but rather in a sinuous course. And due to this, what happens that in this side of the river, we are having kind of deposition, while this side of river, we are having erosion. Thus, the river where that's the, uh, the convex side of river where we are observing erosion is called as cut banks, while the deposition which it happens on the concave side are called as point bars. That means we can say river meander are bound by point bars from one side and the cut banks on the other side. Apart from that, sometimes also what happens that due to continuous erosion by the river, 
this cut banks become very very steeper very very narrow in the width as you can see this is a satellite picture taken of mississippi river this is as i told you this is a point bar where river is causing deposition of the sediments and on this side we have the cut bank where river is continuously eroding the sediments so this is how the general flow of the river look like now interestingly from the river meanders or the loop of the river meander we have another very interesting landform or depositional landform that develops is something that we can call as oxbow lake this is a very important feature so let us try to understand that what causes the development of oxbow lake around the river meanders so first of all we have to understand the development happens in several stages in first stage as we can see when the river is flowing in a loop the and we can see the continuous looping of the river causes narrowing of the neck of these two loops or these two sides of the loop and thus narrow neck of the remainder is gradually being eroded and thus these two necks start to approach each other gradually as the neck start to approach toward each other as more and more deposition is taking place the meander neck then cuts across and cut through completely and water now rather than moving through this loop area start to flow in this straight path in a straight direction because it is the quickest route and the fastest route also we can see this is the path of least resistance so obviously the water start to flow in this straight path now as the water start to flow through the straight path now there will be no water that will be available to flow or there will be no supply of extra water in this looping areas and that is why gradually this area gets cut away from the main course of the river and thus this kind of we can say uh, oxbow kind of shape develops where the water remains stagnant water remains uh, collected due to the earlier flow of the river and such kind of lake that develops are called as oxbow lake because look like the shape of the oxbow that is also something you will see very readily along the meanders river now as the river goes in more downward direction more and more toward the sea areas gradient becomes much and much lesser the velocity becomes much and much lesser and thus in the lower most course of river the river forms a form landform that we can call as braided channels the braided channels how does it look like it clearly it's visible on the picture you can see we can see that river rather than flowing in one single path is divided into several different channels and you have small small land masses which resemble like small small islands are scattered all around this river so braided channels are something we can define as that when the streams or the rivers they are getting overloaded with the sediments and also when the velocity is decreasing they are not able to carry these sediments along with themselves and thus leave the extra material on the river floor in the form of what we can call as sandbars thus then this deposits that obstruct the flow of river causes the stream to split into several different channels and thus the braided stream occurs braided streams forms which is a common occurrence in the region which are relatively dry and arid where and where the supply of water is also not steep so this is something you will see in india in the brahmapur uh, in the course of brahmaputra river lower course of brahmaputra river as well as in the lower course of ganga river now the most important landform river forms in the lower most or the last kind of landform we can see before river enters into the sea is what we can call as a delta so what is a delta a delta can be defined as an arcuate or fan shaped feature which develops at the mouth of the river due to regular deposition of the sediments the delta is a name which has originated from the greek letter delta because the shape of the delta look like this great greek letter delta so the process of formation of delta begins when the deposition of sediments occur as soon as river enters into a sea region or sometime even into the lake region first the river would shed its coarse sediments which are heavier in comparison to the finer light particles and these gets deposited around the river banks when river is entering into the sea and then the finer particles are carried forward by forward by the distributaries to certain distance in the sea regions and there they in com come in com contact with the saline water and due to coming in contact with the saline water the finer sediments that river has brought along with itself start to get coagulated and start to settle at the bottom of the sea since it is the coastal regions the bottom of sea is not very really deeper and that is why due to continuous coagulation accumulation of this finer sediment particles gradually it reaches above the surface of sea and that is when we have formation of this landmass which seems to be extending toward the sea from this coastal areas and that is something which we can which we can call as delta
So this is also we can say is a very important landform because since deltas are made up of sediments brought by the river, the sediment size is very very finer. It has a lot of different different nutrients and mineral. Deltaic regions is also considered as one of the most fertile region of the world. And even India, if you look at the deltaic regions of Sundarban formed by Ganga and Pranaputra river, deltaic regions of Godavari and Krishna river called as KG delta, deltaic regions of the Kaveri river, even uh, uh, smaller smaller rivers are there. So these rivers when they are forming deltas also these are the reasons where you have intense agriculture is uh, practiced and large volume or large variety of crops can also be cultivated. Now depending on what kind of shape delta is forming into, we can divide the delta into three major types. The first kind of delta, as you can see from this clear picture, is the shape which resembles kind of arc of a circle. For example, this is the main river and as the river extends into sea, we can see it is taking kind of arc shape and due to the arc shape of delta, such deltas are called as arcuated delta. The best example of arcuate delta we can see in the, one of the, uh, in the longest river of the world, that is Nile river in Egypt. So Nile delta is an example and type of arcuate delta. On the other hand, we have the second type of delta that is called as cuspate delta. Cuspate delta is something where a protrusion of delta seems to be going out from the coast in a single narrow projection and it resembles like tooth of the river. So due to this elongated tooth like a structure that river uh, that forms in the river, we can call it as cuspate delta and such kind of delta you can see in the Tiber river of Italy. The reason behind formation of such kind of delta is because what happens is the nature of movement of the wind and nature of the flow of water is such that it longitudinally started to deposit the land, deposit the sediments in this kind of projected fashion away from the coast. And that is what lead to development of cuspid delta. The third and last kind of delta we have, which we see, is something that is called as bird foot delta. Now, why we call it as bird foot delta? Because simply, if you look at the picture here, we can see it resembles like the claws of the bird. For example, it has several different projections that is coming out like this. And this is very, very similar to how the claws of bird look like. So, as you can see, that gradually what happens when the main river enters into the sea region, its water get distributed into different, different distributaries. And when the distributary forms in such a manner and the deposition by this distributary take place in such a manner, that there is a lot of elongated deltas, narrow elongated deltas that we see forming in, uh, forming toward the sea. That is when we can call it, it has a bird food delta and the best example of bird food delta we see in the Mississippi River of the United States of America when the Mississippi River is entering into Gulf of Mexico you will see the product, uh, the projection of the delta is kind of claws of the bird and that is the bird food delta. So I hope you understood about all this concept and the major deposition landforms formed by the uh, flowing rivers, flow of rivers. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your fellow friends as well as subscribe to our channel for more such helpful content. That is all for this particular video. Thank you very much.